head, right? Put your nail where you want it, and you strike the tool on the top, not the shingle, see? set in 70. Well, we had it in 72. Look, it's 80 degrees. So the guy came and uh, our AC guy is awesome mm -hmm. and he told us, I don't know what's wrong at first. He said it's working great. <laughs> yeah, all the, the pressure was right. Everything was good. Uh, but uh, he, he suspected the compressor was just failing. So what am I going to do? Get a new compressor. No. <laughs> right now I'm going to punch a hole in the roof. Oh good. Great idea. <laughs> yeah. This is what you do when your house gets hot. You just make holes in your roof so the hot air goes out. Right. Sound reasonable? Sounds kind of crazy. Okay. I got that look in my eye. He was just going to say, you do. <laughs> I don't see another pile of wood. So I wanted to just show you what what my thoughts are. I'm gonna, I've got a, a, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna find a spot between two rafters and I'm gonna cut a hole. I bought a couple of these. So some of you people don't know this, but a lot of these homes are manufactured or stick built without ventilation in the attic. And your attic gets so hot. That's gotta be 150 degrees in that attic. It's like an oven. So I'm going to let some of that hot air out of there and I'm probably going to circle back and put a uh, like a 1300 CFM fan up there and thermostatically controlled to just suck the air out. But for now, I've got to relieve this, this heat from the attic so that the AC can catch up. So let's see how that goes. So right away, right away I learned of a serious problem. Look at this house was built six years ago. Look how poorly insulated this is. This house was built by, it's a modular, it was built by future homes. Look at this. There's the roof and there's my ceiling, the drywall. How is that going to be? This is why I've been paying exorbitant electric bills for AC. It's literally uninsulated in spots. So I'm gonna see if that's under warranty and get somebody to come out here and uh, re-insulate this. At first it looked like little animals were getting in here and curling up, but I think maybe the AC contractors who installed the AC pushed this stuff, up, what little there was out of the way when they put, put the, the uh, lines in, the duct. This is the side that I wanted to put the vents on, but this is the side that takes the prevailing winds. Um, and you might have seen a video I did where I replaced these shingles here. Uh, some shingle damage from a little tornadic action. I don't know what happened. But look at this. This is interesting that uh, you can see damage right here. I think whatever took those shingles up ripped the grit off of shingles. I, I don't know. I can't explain that. But look at that. You can clearly see a damaged area. There's no trees around. Nothing hit this, but just that little five foot area. It's all stripped down. Like old shingles. And these shingles are about seven years old. This is not a not an old structure. So anyway, I'm gonna put the Vent vents on this side, less chance of uh, a disaster during a hurricane. We get a lot of hurricanes, so I might put one, two, three. I might be a little too high here. Uh, not sure, but there's my hole. I should drop it down to the third shape. I think that. Here is my ridge vent, and I'm not feeling any heat pouring out of there. Uh, maybe a little. 
I should be able to feel something moving out of there, but I do not. Okay, this is a great uh, teaching moment or learning moment. I can teach you from my mistakes. Uh, I went a little too high. You see how I want that? I want I want actually want that two shingles down. Now what you should do, not don't do what I do, is just measure from the center of your ridge cap down to the bottom of the second shingle. I think that should be I'm I don't know how to do this. I just it obviously you want to be as high as you can in your attic with your hole. So come down two shingles. So measure down from the center of your ridge to the middle of say your between your third and fourth shingle. Right? That'll put you with something this size that'll give you your hole right in the center and you'll be very you'll still be very high now this is not a problem because I'll just put some asphalt I'll just seal that and as you can see my uh, my flashing goes up over that anyway I'll seal that I'll seal the hole in the plywood everything will be fine but I want to show you something really cool and, and not so cool look at this this is why you want to inspect your roof if you buy a house somebody builds you a house if you can possibly walk your roof do it or hire someone to walk it look at that this has been like this for seven years that's got to come out and I'm going to show you about this tool right now look at this Incidentally, this is a tool that one of our subscribers recommended, but I can't find the comments. So if you're watching, please remind me of your name and thank you. Pull that nail out, just like a pry bar, right? But there's something else cool about this tool. This is, of course, a roofing nail that somebody didn't nail in all the way and then somebody else walked on it. I'm so surprised that I don't have a, a leaking a leak in my ceiling from this. See that? Look at that. How about that? So I'll come up here when I'm doing my work over here and I will seal this. Oh yeah. And the other cool thing that you can do with this tool it's called a roof snake. All right, here we go. Let's show you how we do this. You take your tool, your snake tool, place the nail in the head, right? Put your nail where you want it, and you strike the tool on the top, not the shingle, see? You get it down that far, you remove your tool, and then put it on top of the nail to finish nailing. And you're done, see? And so this handy little tool creates a perfect way to transfer energy without damaging your shingle. All right, now let's take a look at the way I used to do it, the old school method. You put your nail where you want it. Then you take your wood, place it on the head of the nail. This way, when you strike the shingle with the hammer, you're not, you're not putting the force directly onto the nail, which will come up through the shingle. You're, you're putting the force, you're spreading it out onto this piece of wood, you see. And thus, not damaging your shingle. You get your nail in. Am I a pro? Nope. Just a homeowner who needs relief. Hello? I feel the heat. <clears throat> Which way is the arrow going? 
There we go. Let me stop right here and just say I, I need to admonish homeowners, don't do this. Do not do this. First of all, I, I don't really do this professionally. Secondly, you can easily, easily kill yourself. Now, what I've done here is I've released a bunch of grit, right? While I'm reciprocating with my saw, I'm knocking grit off, chopping grit off, and where is it going? Right here. And then I might mindlessly walk along here. And look at that. It's just like a motorcycle around a bend on the gravel road. You can't, you can't screw around. You can't be off your game doing this. And roofers do this all the time. And they have safety gear. And just don't do this. Or if you do it, you're on your own. Be careful. Oh, hey, <laughs> you're sneaky, aren't you? Yeah, it's looking pretty Just good. Don't look down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't, wait, wait, what are you doing? Just coming to look. Well, we have a hole. Yeah, I see that. And we have rain, we have rain coming, yes? Uh, yeah. That's how I like to do things. I'm coming to make your dinner, don't no, worry. I'm already making. The pork is marinating, yes? Yes. All right. I have the veggies Soon. roasting. I'll knock a couple of nails in here and I'll come down. Nice. Okay. Okay. Thank leave, you. leave me alone, woman. <laughs> God, I, I, be careful. That, Very interesting. How would I feel if my girl got hurt? Being curious. Right? Yeah. You fall down the ladder, then you fall down the stairs, right? Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. Right. Probably land right there, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not well, that th far. <laughs> thanks for thanks for checking in. I'm still pulling nails to get under all of this. Let's see. Yeah, come on out. Do a little more clearing, and we're good. Wear gloves. Okay, do you see how I have that up under a couple of rows of shingles? And when I come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap a nail in it tonight. We don't expect heavy winds. When I come back, I'm going to seal really well underneath the whole thing, all the way around with the best roof sealer I can find. And I'm going to watch it for the next few storms. Go in the attic and inspect it. And I'm, as I said, I'm probably going to replace this with a larger fan unit, but I just wanted to do this for now to relieve some of this heat. Uh, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more. And be sure to check out my other videos. Of roof repairs and roof side installed.